It's Wednesday, August 23rd, 2017. From our studios in New Orleans, Louisiana, my name is Harmon Dash. Welcome to Make It Fair. This past weekend, there were a number of protests around the country, most national coverage going to a free speech rally in Boston, organized by white supremacists, who were overwhelmed when they were met with an infinitely bigger counter-protest, made up of citizens using their own First Amendment right to free speech to shout down the sentiment of neo-Nazism originally slated for the event. When it was obvious those who denounced white supremacy greatly outnumbered the white nationalist, Donald Trump tweeted, quote, looks like many anti-police agitators in Boston. Funny how the man who often appears to wish he could run this country like an unconstitutional police state saw a large but peaceful gathering of those exercising free speech as anti-police agitators. Over an hour later, when the event went incident-free, Trump then tweeted, quote, Sometimes you need to protest in order to heal, H-E-E-L, and we will heal, H-E-E-L. The misspelled tweet was later deleted and replaced by the correct spelling of heal, but given Trump's pro-wrestling past, where the evil-slash-bad guy is often referred to as the heel, H-E-E-L, maybe Trump was just projecting. Here in New Orleans, thousands marched against white nationalism in solidarity with Charlottesville, Virginia. Again, a group that maintained civility and peace while chanting their messages of anti-hate. Critics, though, searched for a reason to suggest this group was anything but civil and peaceful. A possible path to that point, one particular individual amongst the peaceful protesters, dressed to appear like a member of the anti-hate group Anti-Fascists, otherwise reduced by detractors to the name Antifa, and though organizers of the protest had clearly requested none of their participants cover their faces, this one individual donned a mask as he held a sign that read, Kill Whitey. He was only one of thousands of people who stood in peaceful protest. He appeared to be alone and was not following the proposed guidelines of the protest as set out by the organizers. You might even wonder if he was even truly with the peaceful protesters at all, and only planted himself among them to change the tone of the event. But one departure from the true intent was all that was needed for those looking to criticize this one individual, whether he actually shared the views of the peaceful protesters or not, allowed critics of the march to paint the entire event as one of hate itself. It's an argument those looking to soften the hateful behaviors of white supremacists often make, drawing a false equivalency between white nationalist groups and groups like Black Lives Matter or the anti-fascists. Even the president attempted to do so when he lay the fault of Charlottesville, quote, on many sides. But are they simply just a different side of the same coin as white nationalists? Speaking specifically on Black Lives Matter, while there may be examples of individuals who claim alliance with that movement and sometimes engage in unlawful, maybe violent behavior, they are a small minority and do not speak for the entirety of what Black Lives Matter stands for, a call for all citizens to be treated equally under the law. Then there are the anti-fascists who, as a group, may sometimes be a bit more aggressive and take a by any means necessary approach to disseminate their message. Some of their ranks will tell you they are a hate group, but their hate is directed at hate from the likes of white supremacists and fascists. While we at Make It Fair don't condone unlawful behavior of any kind, it is important to point out that both groups, Black Lives Matter and the anti-fascists, overwhelmingly seek legal means to defend the rights of the oppressed, and the minority of unlawful acts are strictly a fight for the oppressed, not simply blind acts of random violence. Alternatively, white nationalists universally believe their rightful place is as the oppressors, who naturally deserve to be at the top of a power structure over all other races, like Unite the Right in Charlottesville, whose hateful chants included blood and soil and Jews will not replace us, while they proudly displayed swastikas and other known symbols of hate in their protest. Do the math and critical thought should tell you there is no equivalency between a group whose hate is riding the coattails of Nazis, and other groups whose hate is derived in a fight against oppression. When as Americans did we start equating Nazis with a fight for civil rights? How does all this relate to the corruptive power of money in our politics? It can be argued that the moneyed interests are in support of all this discord amongst the American people. If we're fighting with one another, tearing each other apart, Less attention is paid to the wealthy, clinging to their riches tightly, with little pressure requiring them to reinvest back into the country that made them. 
leaving the rest of us to battle for scraps that are, for many, unlivable. When the Supreme Court upheld Citizens United in 2010, allowing the wealthiest among us to greatly outspend the average American in campaign contributions and buy our democracy for their own interests, not only did they use portions of their fortunes to put their collective thumb on policy, they put more of their money towards purchasing megaphones of disinformation in order to deflect the truth of a growing disparity concerning wealth distribution or income inequality and a disappearing middle class. It was a way to find willing members of the masses to believe the problems they face in their everyday lives are caused by anyone other than they, the rich, who've purchased the narrative. Have you ever looked around at all this discord and wondered what's happening to our country, regardless of your political views or affiliations? Well, how does that saying go? Follow the money? Our current state of technology has given anyone who wants to market to a specific audience the ability to micro-target and influence thought through data collection, revealing trends and messages that resonate, allowing a marketing strategy to swiftly and continually switch gears until it strikes a message that changes thought. Take that ability, throw billions of dollars towards political action, and you can find the people willing to believe any disinformation you want. Since the Citizens United decision, some of the biggest funders of political data collection include billionaires like the Koch brothers, Sheldon Adelson and Robert Mercer to name a few, who will each proudly tell you they'd like nothing more than to do away with taxation, the minimum wage, and government altogether. And they've worked to target you with messages that will further an already shaky trust some Americans have in our government's ability to serve all of our citizens. But dismantle government and we will all be completely dependent on those who have the most money and they'll be free to write whatever rules they want. Would having an overall population at each other's throats play well into that scenario? While technology has offered new tools for moneyed interest to control the narrative, it's not the first time in history you could follow the money to the origins of hate. The rise of the KKK in the 1920s can specifically be traced back to a marketing campaign funded by the rich, carried out by publicity agents and promoters. It was an effort that increased a small membership of 10,000 throughout some southern states to a nationwide membership of over 100,000 within a few months. And a few years later, 5 million Americans were calling themselves proud Klan members. A similar story can be told regarding how money assisted the rise of Hitler and Nazism throughout Germany. And here we are, decades later, going through it again. This is why we at Make It Fair are dedicated to the overturning of Citizens United, so that all of us, the citizens of America, have an equal voice in our democracy as a true democracy mandates. Until we can change the control Citizens United has given money over democracy, we'll likely continue to battle each other instead of looking up at the ones who are truly sowing the discord for their own benefit. Of course, as always, we want to know what you think. Please log on to our website, makeitfair.com, to leave your comments, where you can also become a member if you'd like to join our fight to make it fair. And don't forget, you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. For Make It Fair, my name is Harmon Dash. Thank you for watching.